Okay guys, we made it home back to the garage and we're getting ready to swap out the throttle cable for this new carburetor on the car. If you don't uh, follow me on a regular basis, you can go back to this video right up here and see what the problem was. We determined that the throttle cable that was on the car is the original throttle cable which likely uh, dated itself back to the original two barrel carburetor. So there are different brackets and uh, positions that those brackets will sit on for a two and a four barrel carburetor on these 360s and I've got the two barrel which we've had to modify. But I did find on Amazon with a little bit of research a throttle cable that was about a quarter of an inch longer when it comes to adjustments so it should give us what we need to make sure that that uh, where the throttle hooks on uh, it's not going to be stuck pulling on it and pulling that high idle all the time. So I've got the old one out, the old original one from 1979 and I've got a new one right here and it's going to be very simple to install. I'm just going to stick this piece through the grommet hole in the bulkhead or in the firewall and uh, we'll run it through, fasten everything together and it should be just as simple as that. And if it is just as simple as that, we're going to get this thing running, we're going to take it out to the garage, we're going to give it a bath, clean it up, and uh, show you guys a little bit more about this car. Now, this 1979 Chrysler Cordoba is something that I've had for the last 25 plus years, and uh, it's going to be in the family for quite a while longer. So, I haven't driven it yet this season, today's the day we're going to get it out. So let's get this throttle cable on, get her started up, and out to the shop. Okay, let's go try that. I think we got it. Let's get this thing out on the road. And there we have it guys, there is my 1979 Chrysler Cordoba out of the garage getting ready for its first voyage of the summer and all we're doing is we're going to take it out to the shop, we're going to give it a bath, clean it up and likely bring it right back home. Okay guys, now that we've got the car out here, it's time to give it a bath, we'll get it outside and we've got a little bit of a special surprise coming for you. Uh, Trucker Dave, you know exactly what it is. It's going to be something that is a sacrifice to the curse of the Doba. We're going to put this thing to bed finally. Again, if you guys don't know what the curse of the Doba is, well, you need to start watching some past episodes on this car as well as on the Project Truck Dale. So, without further ado, we're going to give you some time lapse and some music. We're going to give this thing a bath.
Well, we've got the first step done and that is washing the car. We've got it all washed. Now we've got to get it dried off so that the water doesn't leave spots on it. And before you guys go off on me in the comments about washing this car with a brush, a couple of things. One is the car does have a good coat of wax and polish on it. So what scratches a, a brush may give it are gonna be few and far between. Two, that is one of the softest brushes that we've ever had in the shop. So uh, again, if there's any scratches at all, it's gonna be very, very minor. Clean water, um, a soft brush, and a good polish on your vehicle, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna dry the car off, and usually what I like to do is I take a squeegee. Again, you guys are gonna go off on me in the comments about using a squeegee on that paint. Uh, I use it to get the bulk of the water off, then I take the air hose to get in and underneath. All of these moldings, anybody who's ever owned a late 70s or 80s uh, car that has all this trim and aluminized uh, panels and stuff like that, water just sits in there and collects. If you don't get it out with the air hose, as soon as you drive down the road, you're gonna leave streaks on your paint. So we'll squeegee it off, we'll take the air to it, and then we'll go over finally with a terry towel to get any excess water. And then we're gonna get it outside and like I said, we've got a little sacrificial um, something uh, to show you guys um, to see if we can finally get rid of the curse of the doba that seems to be affecting Dale the truck. So anyways, let me get this done. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> So now that we've got the car all cleaned up and shined up for some driving, it's time for the big reveal of what we're gonna do to alleviate this burden, this curse of the Cordoba. Let me remind you, the curse of the Doba started when I stole the carburetor off of this car and put it on Dale when I rebuilt the motor. You see, I didn't wanna put the old thermal quad back on, sorry, quadrajet. Didn't wanna put that back on the truck, so I wanted to use an Edelbrock. I stole this one knowing it was working pretty good. It's now on Dale. Ever since, I was having little problems with Dale. You guys all know the story. If you don't, I'm gonna put a playlist right here of Dale's uh, success and how we got to where we are with him and to the, for the most part, finished product that we have today. So Trucker Dave dubbed it the curse of the Doba and I was inclined to almost believe him that there was a curse and when I finally bought the new AVS2 Thunder Series car from Edelbrock and put it on this car, well, I was hoping that the problems would have gone away. A few little hiccups here and there on this car, but Dave suggested that we have a sacrifice. Well, my suggestion was sacrificing the rear tires. Let's do it. That was a little bit of a smoke show, wasn't it? And yes, this thing does have the sure grip rear end. And we will have more of that, guys. We gotta get rid of these old tires. They've been on there since I rebuilt the car back in probably uh, 2007, 2008-ish. Uh, it's been a long time. So it's time to burn those off and replace them with some new ones. And uh, this is how we're gonna do that quicker uh, than we have to. So. I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little video. I know it wasn't much, but at the end of the day, we've got the Chrysler 
back on the road. We're gonna have some more videos on it. A lot of you guys have been asking for it. So stay tuned. I hope that you will. And don't forget the Car Guy and Six Fan Show will be premiering on July the 9th, right here on my channel with Straight Six Fan, who is right here. You can go check out his channel. I hope that you'll subscribe to him. We've got lots of guests coming. This first episode is going to be a barn burner. So I hope you tune into my channel on the 9th at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern and nine local time for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Just a bunch of guys talking about cars. I'm also looking for the submit your ride videos from you guys. That means I want to see what ride you guys have in a two minute video you can send to me. My information is in the description box below. And if you send it to me, I will highlight it in one of my videos. So please submit your ride. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.